Hi everyone, Nancy Waring here, founding director of the Mindfulness Studies program at Leslie, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to offer several guided meditations. This will be the first of four, and I know that a number of you are skilled in meditation and had considerable practice experience, others not so much. So this meditation is going to um, assume that you maybe haven't had as much practice as you might have had and provide an opportunity for those who are new to meditation to um, take a dip and see if this is helpful or not. I hope it will be. Uh, certainly anything that we can do to bring calm and ease and so on to the mind and the body is a wonderful thing to do in these unprecedented times and we're all capable, we all have the wonderful resource of being able to draw on our minds in our own best interests. I'm thinking about uh, right now uh, Joseph Goldstein, whom as many of you know was one of the first uh, Westerners to uh, bring mindfulness initially to uh, the state of Massachusetts after going to India in search of learning about meditation and he found a teacher and the teacher said to him if you want to get to know your mind you need to sit down and look at it so that's what we're doing we're sitting down and looking at our minds and noticing uh, the default places that our minds go to in these times and again and again returning to our ally the breath for comfort and calm and the kind of equanimity that can help us make good decisions in these, uh, as I said, unprecedented times. So let's go. Actually, I should say before I start that uh, the uh, in classical meditation teaching, meditation instructions are given for meditating in four different positions, sitting, standing, walking, and lying down. We're going to cover each of those positions in these uh, guided sessions, as well as an additional setting, excuse me, session in which we practice what's called meta meditation. That's not meta as in meta metacognition, but meta metta, which refers to a kind of boundless friendliness that we can extend to each other in these times when, as in no other times, at least in my lifetime, the sense of interconnectedness is uh, is is so so great. So thank you. And um, when you're ready, I'm going to close my eyes here and uh, let's begin. And when the sitting is over, you'll hear a meditation bell. We'll sit for about 20 minutes or so. So the invitation here is to settle into a comfortable posture with the spine straight and you can perhaps imagine that there's a, a string at the top of your head that is uh, holding your head up straight on your neck and the chin may be tipped down slightly and uh, let's begin by bringing relaxation to the body you may be sitting on the floor, on a meditation cushion. You may be sitting in a chair. Either is fine. I'm sitting in a chair and I'd like to invite us all to begin to notice the sensations in the feet. Whether the feet are resting on the floor or whether they're in another position because we're on a cushion. And also notice the position of the hands, they may be touching one another, maybe not, maybe folded together, maybe in your lap, maybe on your thighs, whatever works for you and feels most natural. But most importantly, to the extent that it's possible for you, allow the spine to be straight and perhaps even take a moment to uh, climb up the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, starting at the base of the spine and going right up to the uh, last cervical vertebrae where the spine meets the bottom of the head at the base of the neck. 
and bringing the attention to the face now noticing the region of the jaw allowing the jaw to be soft as possible this is an area where we tend to hold a lot of tension noticing the lips touching each other or not perhaps the tongue maybe resting behind the top front teeth noticing the area on either sides of the nose moving now to the eyes and seeing if it's possible to allow the eyelids to rest gently on the eyes seeing also if it's possible to allow the space between the eyebrows to be soft the eyebrows themselves to rest gently over the eyes noticing the temples and the forehead another region where we tend to hold a lot of tension see if it's possible to allow the face to just drop ever so incrementally we have hundreds of little facial muscles and see if we can allow them to to let go and let the face be soft just bringing now the attention to the whole body sitting And when you're ready, turning the attention to the breathing, beginning to notice how the, the breath is for you. You may notice that the abdomen naturally rises on the in-breath and drops back down toward the spine on the out breath not trying to manage the breath in any way it's doing just fine on its own The in-breath, the out-breath may be long or short, smooth, choppy, variable. It doesn't matter. Just noticing the breathing exactly as it is. Some people find it helpful to notice the breathing in the chest area as well as the abdomen. If you're new to meditation and not accustomed to noticing the abdomen rise on the in-breath and drop back down toward the spine on the out-breath, you might want to place the flat of one of your hands on the abdomen. And the sensations will naturally become more vivid.
naturally the mind will leave the breath for other objects of attention. Some of which may be useful. Noticing sensations of calm or ease or some not so useful if the mind gets on a, a thought train or gets aroused by thoughts, emotions, sounds, sensations, pleasant or unpleasant. Simply noticing what the mind is up to and returning to the sensations of breathing again and again. Whatever we practice, we of course get better at it. So the more we train the mind to be still, the better we get at it. The more we invite the mind to race around, the better it gets at racing around. Of course it races around anyway, so our practice here is to, to notice what the mind is up to. Not to try to stop it from doing what it does, but noticing what it does. And coming back to the breath, to the extent possible allowing the, the breath to be an anchor, to keep us in the present moment with things exactly as they are, not wanting them to be any different. Because whatever is here is already here. No need to strain. Finding what is just the right amount of effort for you to be 
as intentional as possible about this practice of returning to the breathing again and again, noticing where the mind goes when it leaves, noticing where it goes. You may find yourself way down the tracks on a thought train and not even know how you got there. Not a problem. Just when you notice, come back. sounds or other distractions occur, simply noticing them, if possible, without developing a narrative around the sound, but just noticing it as pure sound. Similarly, when sensations in the body arise, discomfort or pleasant sensations, simply noticing them just as they are. If you become quite uncomfortable, it's fine to shift your position a little bit. Best if you're able to Stay still. Once we start to move or fidget, that moving or fidgeting begins to feed on itself and we move or fidget more. The last five minutes or so of the sitting, seeing if it's possible to bring the attention up a little bit. My own teacher speaks of impeccable present moment awareness. That's a pretty high bar, but I like it.
just this in-breath, just this out-breath, and the little space in between the in-breath and the out-breath. Being breathed. And when the bell rings, doing your best to listen to the tones from the very beginning until the sound entirely fades away. I would really like to um, thank you for joining me in this sitting today and encourage you to continue to sit 20 minutes a day if you can using this video as you like or not. You may be practicing alone. If you're using this video you're probably not practicing alone and also you can be very assured that all over the world whenever you are practicing many other people are practicing as well and as I said at the outset our awareness of the deeply interconnected nature of us as a human community is now as it never was before so uh, in recognition of that I'd like to close with a little quotation that uh, whose origin I'm really not aware of but is a, a go-to quote for me. It, it somehow came to me and I'd like to share it with you. It goes like this. When you adopt the viewpoint that there is nothing that exists that is not a part of you, that there is no one who exists that is not a part of you, that any judgment you make is self-judgment, that any criticism you level is self-criticism, you will wisely extend to yourself an unconditional love that will be the light of the world. You will wisely extend to yourself an unconditional love that will be the light of the world. So may we all be safe and protected May all beings everywhere be safe and protected. Thank you for your practice.